Well, scientists have developed a blood test that estimates how quickly people age. A new study shows that by reading a person's genes, researchers can determine their biological age, which is often different from their chronological age. And they say it could be a better measurement of a person's health. And with further research, biological age might even help predict a person's risk of Alzheimer's. So joining us right now is Dr. Nina Radcliffe. Thank you for joining us, as Thank always. Uh, so, so many potential applications here. What do you feel are the most promising? Well, what the researchers show is the greater your biological age, the more likely you'll be diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And this is hopeful in the area of Alzheimer's research because there's very few, very few measures out there that can help us determine if we are at risk for Alzheimer's. And it's even difficult to, um, to diagnose Alzheimer's as well. And this is in the paradigm shift that we're seeing in healthcare. Early detection helps with our arsenal against these diseases. So if you're detected earlier, you're more likely to make the necessary lifestyle changes that can help slow down and even prevent Alzheimer's disease mm -hmm. itself. And it goes beyond Alzheimer's. These 150 genes that they have isolated, when they follow those, they can figure out uh, how long a person's going to live. And if you know that in advance and you're at risk, you can make lifestyle changes? Absolutely. And so we have 24,000 genes in our body. And right now they're looking at the 150 genes. And specifically, again, going back to Alzheimer's hopefulness, our researchers can now look at these 150 genes and maybe hone in on what some of the causes of Alzheimer's are. This allows for better drug discovery. We can do more focused approaches, even with non-invasive methods, to maybe stop it in its tracks. So this is very hopeful in that message. All right. So uh, one of the other things that uh, applications that they're thinking of using it for uh, would be for um, for organ donation. If you're going to uh, maybe take a donation from an older patient, you would be able to study whether that patient is their true chronological age or whether biologically that organ might be older or younger to make a better uh, match. Right, exactly. And one of the biggest problems when it comes to organ transplantation is the supply. There just is not a supply that's enough for people. And organ transplantation can mean the difference between life and death for many out there. What we're doing is we're starting to take organs from older and older people. Just because you're 60 or 65 years old does not mean that your organ is 60, 65, or even older than that. So this test may, its preliminary results, um, help us um, start taking older organs that can be useful and really help save somebody's life. On the other side of that, people are asking, could you also use it to determine who would be eligible to receive an organ? If they're biologically older than they seem, do they lose that eligibility? Right, and that's something that's come up. This, these are preliminary. Right now, we want to look at the hopeful sides of this. We mm -hmm. want to see if we can increase our organ supply, and that's really what's important. We want to get those organs from people who may otherwise be eligible just because they're 65 or 70 years old to get a kidney. That can mean somebody coming off of hemodialysis. To get a lung transplant can mean somebody has with cystic fibrosis who's 30 years old can live a lifestyle that, with quality and enjoyment. Yeah. Another question that's come up is uh, what does this do to your insurance premium? Might they start basing it? This is just a blood test to get all this information. Could insurance companies do that blood test and say we're going to base your rate on your biological age instead of your there's always that possibility. Mm -hmm. But again, these are preliminary results. I want to focus on the hopefulness of this. Mm -hmm. This can help people identify if they're at, at risk for Alzheimer's disease, and it can allow them to make lifestyle changes, exercising as well as sleeping better, eating foods that are um, brain healthy. These are the important things we want to look at it from there. And we want the researchers to be able to now hone in what the cause is so they can develop better drugs, better modalities to treat it early. And that's really what the key is with a um, study like this. How close are we to having somebody go in and say, I want that test? And that's, it's still preliminary. We're talking about years. We need to do clinical trials. We need to look at this. We need to be able to compare. It was a small study, but we want to expand this to a larger group. So this is just something exciting. It's getting us um, excited for the future hope. All right. Dr. Yeah. Nina Radcliffe, Great. thank you so much. Thank you.